Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Island Spot Sports. And before we get to our guest today, we have a big shout out for, for Living Sisu. Living Sisu is a platform and app that wants to give you all the tools to have success in your sport. Their main objective is to activate your lifestyle. So for active, it's for active people. Enjoy discounts at, at companies like BioSteel, 30% off, BodyLogics, the Goalie Guild, all his books are discounted. Roan, Lululemon for men, 20% off. Online stretching programs with Eccentrics, one full month free. They got super silent massage guns, 20% off those. And it's a great quality. It's way less expensive than a Theragun. And it's a great, it's great quality. So there's so many more discounts that you guys will need to just become a member to see. So they want to provide you with anything you need for success. So come join the community. I'm a part of it. A bunch of other athletes are a part of it. So it's free to join. It takes 20 seconds to have it, to get exclusive offers to your sport. And it's definitely worth worth it. So do do us a huge favor and go sign up for Living Sisu's membership. It's free, 20, takes 20 seconds. So go do it and we'll see you there. Living Sisu is a great company. We uh we know one of the co-founders, Zach Fricali. He's a great guy. He uh he's the co-founder and he does a lot of live streams on Instagram at uh, at Living Sisu and with a bunch of elite athletes and you learn a lot from like the athletes' determination, the resiliency, everything to what me made them become successful. So it's been a great experience so far. So Go on. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description. So uh, go sign up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of On Spot Sports. I'm Jack, and today's episode, we are joined by a very special guest, good friend of the show, and a very familiar guest on the show, Dustin Bone Smith. Bones is previously on episode 42. Bones has been creating some awesome content over the last year and has been training with some unreal vintage gear. So it's going to be a good time to talk about gear, NHL, hockey, like content so welcome back to the show with dustin smith bonesy what's going on yeah not much man thanks for having me on again yeah no problem so how have you been like everything like summer's been busy for you i'm, I'm guessing it's so, like how's how has summer been for you going into the fall now yeah it's been a lot of hockey a lot of uh a lot of youtube stuff and uh yeah like you said just busy times working too so uh just kind of all over the place really yeah, how do you how do you balance all that? It's just a lot a lot on your plate. Like, how do you separate that from everything else in life? Yeah. Uh, honestly, like I have to stay pretty organized. Like, I have a calendar that I fill out every month, and I kind of have to like stay ahead of things. I'm looking at it right now, and I'm like, man, I got a lot of stuff up there. So, uh, especially with the NHL season coming up, you know, I, it's it's cool to start putting Preds games in on the calendar, and uh, looking forward to getting after those again. Are you still uh, their e-bug in case they and they need you? Yeah, yeah. So they uh, they decided to have the e-bugs back again this year because uh, you know obviously they had the taxi squad guys last year, so uh, no taxi squad this year. So it'll be fun to get back into being an e-bug again. Yeah, a small small chance to get into an NHL game, but you'll take that chance anytime. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So like, what what have you been doing this summer? Like with your like you've been doing some unreal adventures like creating awesome content like what have you been what has been like the most fun thing you've been fun things that you've been doing over the summer uh I mean aside from like trying out vintage goalie gear and stuff like that it's been cool meeting up with other people like uh, other YouTube people like uh you know I went to Florida to meet up with Steve McKeegan of future pro goaltending and then I met up with Charles Parker to Cooper goalie and you know he let me try out some really awesome vintage stuff and then, uh, you know, been able to meet up with, hang out with Casimir Kaskasuo a few times. Kane Van Gate came down and shot a video with us. So uh, I, that's kind of been the most fun part for me so far. Yeah. So, like, what was it like going down to Florida and training with, like, with a legendary uh, C. McKeegan? It was cool, man. It was, it, was, it was a fun excuse to go on a trip, too, you know, pop down to Florida. But, you know, having a one on one session with Keeks was was great. You know, I knew he was going to put me to work and he definitely uh, he definitely made me work for it. But it was great. Yeah, I, I hope to do it again sometime, you know, maybe take a trip up to Toronto and see him again. Yeah, that's unreal. What what did you learn from him? Because he he knows so much about the position of goaltending. Like what you must have been like 
in awe with everything he he knows about like what it's like what were those big takeaways that you that you took away from from skating with him well he's really good at breaking down little skills we worked on you know hand projection and um we did a decent amount of skating stuff but you know he was he's really good at running you through a drill and then when he sees something that he thinks he needs to be tweaked he's really good at you know stopping things letting you know hey like you know this is what i see let's change this up a little bit and, uh you know running through that specific skill the specific skill again until uh you know you get it yeah absolutely any any excuse <laughs> to go travel and play hockey like you're that's that's unreal and you're going to take that every single time because what's better than playing hockey in a different state yeah absolutely and that's kind of what i plan on doing moving forward here you know i really hope to line up a decent amount of trips and meet up with a ton of people you got to come down to illinois soon or come up to illinois yeah yeah dude I, I have so many spots on my list like illinois would be sweet yeah absolutely it's like what what was the ice like down in down in florida because you always hear about how soft it is because like the humidity like what what was your take from your point of view on the ice in florida uh, so the ice here in nashville gets pretty soft over the summer too i mean there's um there's a couple rinks that you know it's really tough over the summer to keep them in good shape you know I, the centennial it's our oldest rink and it, over the summers it's like <laughs> you know every ice cut it's like a it's a lake out there so um florida wasn't that bad in comparison you know i didn't really think it was really too soft or anything like that it was it was great for the, the session that we had yeah that's at least good and the a couple of weeks ago i i played for my men's league team as a forward and I, like the the ice was an absolute lake like it didn't, it didn't yes. get soft or it didn't clear up until like the third period and like the pucks were stopping everywhere it was, oh, it was pretty so crazy. annoying and, I mean it's fun to play summer hockey like that but like yeah those ice conditions but when you're brutal. trying to make a pass or a shoot or a shot and it just stops all of a sudden like that that gets annoying and like oh it yeah slows slows the pace down that's for sure yeah absolutely so then besides going to for traveling for hockey obviously you've been creating some awesome content for YouTube it's like what what has what have you been doing there and like what kind of content have you, have you been creating uh i've been trying to do a, a fun mix of uh like vintage stuff talking about more like modern gear you know any kind of any kind of gear that i get i try to do some fun content with uh you know i've been doing a lot of stuff uh with like vr and uh sensorina which which i've really been enjoying and then um you know, actually, I just got these uh, vintage skates not too oh, long ago. I'm going to give sick. these a rip at some point. These are going to be super interesting. I tried them on. They fit great, but, you know, I still got to go get them sharpened. So I can't wait I to wonder, see the, I wonder how they'll the be face. on the ice with, like, all, with the movements and everything and how, how oh, much you have to adapt and change to it. It's going to be crazy. You know, it's um, they're, they weigh a ton, you know, especially compared to skates now. Like, they, they're, they weigh so much. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, what's been, like, the most challenging part about creating content, like, especially when you go into, like, that creative block where you just can't think of anything? Like, have you had that happen recently? Yeah, uh, I think over this last year doing YouTube, I might have had, like, you know, a few points here and there where I was like, man, I don't know what I want to do and, like, whatever. But um, I'm at the point now where I have so much stuff that I want to do that it's, like, almost overwhelming. It's like, man, like, you know, I got to really kind of dial in on on – the you know one video at a time kind of thing um so you know i try not to put too much pressure on myself if i decide you know what i want to take a little bit of a break i you know take a little bit of a break so these last couple of weeks i haven't really done much but i've got a handful of stuff lined up right now again i'm looking at my calendar i'm like jesus man i got a lot of work ahead of me but uh <laughs> it's it's all in good fun man i love it it keeps you busy and there's no, nothing better than keeping keeping busy, especially if you're organized and all that and just you can do everything at once. Like, uh, like I have a lot of stuff on my plate as well. And it's just makes everything more fun and more challenging as well. And who who doesn't love a challenge when you're you're an athlete and you got to get over those obstacles? Oh, right. Yeah. And I'm sure running a podcast, too, it's it's got to be very similar to a, a YouTube. You know, you're constantly lining shit up and uh getting things going so uh I, I can definitely see the comparison there yeah absolutely i got like six or seven more episodes in the in the queue and it's just it's a lot of editing as well and like i'm sure you you have that too like it's it, it editing is not easy like it takes a while so like how long does it take you to usually edit 
uh, edit some of those videos man there's been some that have taken me like three or four days and it's like you know i got to get after it for a few hours put it down come back at it and it's um i've gotten a lot better at it over time and i think that's been a fun part of it too just learning different ways to edit and different cool things to put into videos but uh you know recently i i really tried to like uh get everything set up like in a template so i can just start a project up i already have everything i need going so i can kind of speed up that process because um you know like you said it takes a long time and if i can cut down time there on editing like you know just like anything else get more efficient yeah absolutely so what kind of editing styles do you use or do you, or like what kind like do you have like certain points where you edit and just clip stuff like how do you how do you go about editing and just like the different styles that you could go well i i don't really do too much like the vlog kind of style i i definitely plan to do a few of those i think with the whole emergency goalie thing it's a cool opportunity to do like you know things like day in a life of an e-bug i think that'd be kind of fun and interesting um but yeah that vlog style isn't really like something i'm entirely too comfortable with um i think casimir kaskas who talks about it a lot you know he's he's still building that confidence being in front of a camera and carrying around in public so i'm not quite there yet you know i'm i'm more uh you know i have the uh party room at the rink over here down the road for me and uh you know the rink manager lets me go on there every once in a while and i can just sit down talk about gear whatever i need to do and then uh i mean as far as like editing i usually have my my talking points and i like to cut between a couple different camera angles there and then i just you know go out and get a bunch of really cool fun b-roll stuff and make some cool looking slow-mo hockey stuff really like <laughs> yeah. pretty much it it's all it's all about the different angles you know just you, you oh, gotta yeah. get the the perfect angle at the perfect time yeah yeah so who who is someone that you look up to that like of creating content like i'm sure like kaz is up there and like kvg and like the things they created but who who was like your the guy that you looked up to when starting this starting this youtube channel uh I I think getting into the hockey space, you obviously have to look at, especially the goalie space. You have to look at guys like Kazmir Kaskasuo, Trav Ford Oilers, Kane Van Gate. You know, these guys have been doing it for a while. And, um, you know, they've done a great job with it. Um, but there's, uh, I, I got into like speaker building at one point years ago. I decided I want to build some speakers. And there was this YouTuber who has this whole YouTube channel based on speaker builds. And I just really liked his style. Like it was kind of more of that sit down in front of the camera, explaining things, talking. Um, but he also had this really cool, like uh, almost artsy style of building. Like, you know, watching him build these speakers was just like so interesting to me. So uh, I kind of tried to take a little bit of style, you know, pointers from his videos too. So it's it's a good mix of a lot of different, different people. Yeah, absolutely. You got got to pick pick parts and pieces apart and just put put them together for uh, to create your own original content like that's yeah that's what it's all about is the the content you're creating and just taking a little little bits and pieces that make other people successful yep just like just like in the goalie world you just take some things from other goalies and test them out even though sometimes you don't fully adapt to them but you just try them out and try to see what see what works yeah, it, it's funny how the goalie mind can kind of be applied to so many different parts of to literally everything. really anything. Yeah, it's 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 kind of uh, that, that's another one of those points of, you know, being a goaltender and how it really kind of gives you those life skills that you can apply to pretty much anything. Yeah, it, absolutely. Like I've <laughs> I've realized that I've just every, anything I learned from goaltending, like I use it as like in like any sport, any any part of life, like it's it's interesting how it translates and makes you makes you a better person and like just everything that the the sport brings you like it's all valuable information that you use whether you're on the ice or whether you're off the ice yeah absolutely so like getting into like the coll collabs i guess you could say with uh casimir kaskasuo kane van gate like what what has been like those content uh videos like and just what was it like just being around them and just shooting shooting the shit and shooting uh videos for the for both you all of the youtube channels actually yeah man that was that was such a blast like um you know i <clears throat> skating with casca suo was awesome <clears throat> just being able to skate with them because you know i learned a lot just watching him play but you know it's cool to do a couple of videos with him but when kvg came down you know we're all sitting in the locker room hanging out and i i 
I think we might have been in there just nerding out for gear for a good 15, 20 minutes before we were like, oh, guys, we got to get going. We got to go jump on the ice. So, um, you know, they're both such great people. And, um, you know, getting to hang out with KVG, too, a little bit while he was here was great. So, um, yeah, it was it, just overall just such a good time. Like, videos or not, like, uh, you know, on top of the fact we're doing some awesome videos was uh, kind of a, a bonus. Yeah, I know that, that skill competition that you guys did in uh... – who I forgot who won that it was a KVG it was, was KVG it? he pulled it off yeah the the beer league legend himself he saw <laughs> exactly. the, e the, the NHL the NHL yeah uh, NHL goalie right yeah yeah he pulled it off how how much fun was doing that doing that competition because I know just from the videos you guys were having a blast no matter what you guys were doing like it was just fun and games like what was that whole oh yeah whole day was... like it was great. I mean, you know, we really, we had um, an hour of ice and we had, you know, three different ideas that we wanted to do videos for each of us. So, you know, we were kind of pressed for time. So we tried to, uh, you know, kind of running through things as quick as we could, but yeah, I mean, like the comp was so much fun, like, you know, just three goalies hanging out, having a good time and, um, you know, just being goalie nerds really. Yeah. When, when all the goalies get together, like, it's just it's a fun time. You you just go on the ice, hang in the locker room, like you said, and just you can sit there for hours just talking with them and like time flies when you're just talking with them and just nerding out about goalie gear, just the position itself. Like it's incredible. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like what so like since you skated with Casimir Cascasuo, like what have been some of the things that you learned from him, especially since he played in the NHL for the National Predators? last season on the taxi squad and just just learning from him and just skating with him and training with him like what what did what did you see that like that you're like wow like I I gotta like recreate that well I, I learned that I'm not as smooth as he is like he he's so good at making it look so easy and you know you look at his hands and they're always in the right place they're so calm and you know a, a puck almost seems to just go straight into his glove every time. Meanwhile, I'm over here like fighting for pucks. And, you know, I feel like I'm really kind of, like I said, fighting for things. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, watching him play and, and, you know, really seeing uh, the amount of professionalism that he, he brings with him was, was um, you know, great to see and, um, you know, try to take a little bit of pieces here and there. You know, his preparation is, is huge. He gets to the rink super early stretches and he's on the foam roller and uh, you know some things that I definitely should be doing more of especially now that I'm getting older you know uh, legs aren't as young as they used to be but um, yeah older. oh it really does but uh, yeah it, it was great being able to see him play and you know really learn a lot from him yeah absolutely so like what like what do you think makes him so smooth and just like he barely has to move like a centimeter and it's already in his glove like it's just silky smooth like what what yeah. do you get from just skating with him I mean I I think a lot of that comes from you know all the work that he's put in over the years to get to the place where he is now he does you know a lot of his vision training and part of me is like man that vision training must be paying off pretty well for him because I mean like I said he sees the puck so well but um you know at the same time he's he's been working hard to get to where he's at so um you know, I just hope that maybe I can get there one day, but I'm not making any promises to myself. Yeah, absolutely. But you just got to try. You just got to do whatever you can to get there. If you if you don't, at least you can say you tried. Like, that's that's the main thing. Like, you, you, you're you going for it. You're trying for it. Like, that's all that matters. Yeah, right. Yeah, and, you know, skiing with guys like him or even, you know, guys like Pekka or UC or, um, you know, everybody else in the Preds, like, you can really see that separation that, you know, they, they're where they are for a reason. And it's like, wow, like these guys are great. Like, I, I feel like I'm a good goalie. They're definitely on a whole different level and you just kind of have to appreciate like, you know, where they're at. Yeah, absolutely. So then going back to YouTube a little bit here in content, like where do you see your channel going in the future? Are you just doing it for fun and just hoping to bring, bring like the, the e-bug content like you said and just like different point of views from for to get content out there yeah this is all just a big hobby for me um you know that I don't really there's not a lot of money involved in it at, at least right now and I don't really anticipate there being a lot of money involved but um you know so if the the real motivation is is 
a fun hobby and an excuse to go out and travel for hockey at some point, meet up with some most awesome people. You know, I think doing social media gives you an excuse to meet people like, you know, like Pavel Barber. You know, I, I plan on going up to Toronto, do a big trip, you know, meet up with him and, and then, uh, you know, meet up with as many people as I can. Yeah. It's all, it's all fun and games. Like you meet so many amazing people and just, you also go and go and create content, like even, even more content than normal. And it's just, just the experience, I guess you can say, because every, every place you go, every, every ice session you go on, like it's a different experience and it's different. So it's, always fun when you're doing someone else someone new that you don't know and you get to learn from them and just shoot the shit with them oh yeah yeah it, it's it's a whole uh it's a whole lifestyle you know it, it, that uh that i'm obviously very interested in yeah absolutely so uh, i want to go and tell your vintage pads a little bit here so like this summer you decided to change the goalie world by wearing that a uh, vintage set that you will wear in your instagram videos your stories your uh your youtube content like what is it like wearing that vintage gear like how do you get in a how do you start wearing that gear I, the the gear is so different from modern gear like obviously there's has been so much changes in goalie gear so to put on some old vintage gear and play a vintage style really kind of gives a whole new perspective to the position which you know in turn like you know I, I wear my vintage gear and then I go and put on my modern gear and it's like wow man like it's night and day difference but the 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 vintage style is so much fun to play like you know just flailing your arms around trying to play stand up being more patient on your feet but uh you know watching guys like Charles Partridge or Cooper goalie doing his thing you know his gear collection is insane but um you know it, it really kind of gave me motivation to you know all right like you know what i'm i'm gonna do that like i'm gonna get some vintage gear i want to try to play the vintage style and uh do it it's been a blast how many how many chirps have you gotten like what's what's been the the chirps like when you when you go on the ice with that stuff uh it's just just people call me old school like uh i forget one guy was like from the bench i forget what name he was calling me but I, like you come out in vintage gear and everyone like kind of lights up they're like wow this guy's really out here in vintage gear like it's so cool and you know it's obviously not something you see very often so um you haven't really gotten too many chirps just uh you know people want to take pictures with you too I, I know when Charles Partridge came down here to hang out you know he had three or four guys coming up taking pictures with him you know he had his old school face mask on and, you know again something you never really see yeah, so you put that mask on before. It's like, what? What's it like from <laughs> the modern mask to that mask? And like, is it a lot like more? You're more nervous in that because it's not as Man. protective. <laughs> this thing right here, like, <laughs> honestly. So I've I've only worn this on the ice once for the the KVG and the Casmir shoot, and. Um, I, it was honestly almost scary how I didn't even think about it. Like, you know, I had my buddy just kind of like, he wasn't shooting too hard or anything like that. You know, we we're just having fun, but just like with any other mask, like I didn't think about it at all. Like, which is kind of scary to me. Cause it's like, obviously it's just a face mask. You know, if I'm diving around for these pucks and playing, you know, I could get popped in the head. And I think, I think, it's just a matter of time when that actually does happen. And then, you know, maybe I'll start second guessing, like, uh, you know, I got this mask on, but um, yeah, I was, I was impressed with that. Like I just, it didn't even cross my mind when I had it on. Like it was just like playing with any other helmet. Is the eye holes like the same as like uh, the, uh, the cat eyes and just like how you can like, it's just perfectly, you can see and nothing's like in the way. Uh, I wouldn't say it's perfect. I mean, it's definitely, you know, there's the peripherals aren't as, yeah. Um, as, as open as like a, a cat eye or even from a combo i feel like the combo masks like they're so open uh compared to even like a, a modern mask now but um yeah the, the vision's definitely not perfect but I, I was impressed with the the sight lines out of there yeah absolutely and you've also worn worn the combo mask like what's what's been like the biggest differences differences that you know is from the modern mask to the combo mask and then to the the vintage goalie mask as well well if i if i ever go out to like an open ice like stick and puck or anything like it just to work on skating like if i know i'm not gonna jump in a net or you know take any shots I'll, I'll bring my my combo mask because it breathes so well and 
especially if I'm bagging myself, like I can take all the extra love the baggers. Get, so yeah, you know, it, it's, which is good. I, I love getting out and working on some skating stuff just to, you know, get out and work on goalie things. But um, yeah, the, the combo breathes a lot better than the modern mask, obviously not as protective, but um, you know, the face mask doesn't breathe very well at all. You know, I, obviously it's, it's right there on your face, but uh it's it's just so cool to have that thing on and, and skate around with it yeah absolutely do you ever think you're gonna go to uh, try the coveted mask that kaz that kaz has been wearing and try try that out for a little bit I, it was actually pretty cool seeing that in person um you know i had seen pictures and obviously videos of him wearing it talking about it and i think that's kind of like the perfect modern and combo mix obviously it looks like a combo mask but it's you know strong and built like a modern mask so yeah i mean like those things are super cool and you know if it came down to it i'd probably get one <laughs> like um you know I'd, I'd probably get his specs too because i think he has his own kind of specific specs for the mask uh but yeah man that's such a cool mask yeah just from his videos you could tell that he really likes that mask over the other mask that he's worn and just it's a lot more breathable. I think he said in one of his videos, like, it's just, it's awesome seeing like the development of how like goalie masks are going and like goalie pads and all that. And just how the direction of the technology is going. Yeah. Right. It, what, what do you think is going to happen in the future with goaltending with like the technology coming in and just like the, the new pads, the graphics, like all that. Uh, like, I, I think goalie gear, you can only do so much with it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think we're already starting to see things like, you know, different foams, you know, harder rebounds. Uh, um, I think really we're just going to see new trends kind of come up, whether it's an old trend that gets recycled or, you know, a new material gets used that kind of changes things up a little bit. But uh, I think until you know, if the NHL, for whatever reason, hopefully they don't change the, the pad sizing again. Um, I think until there's a big major shakeup in the goalie gear world and industry, like I think there's not going to be too much change. I think a lot of companies have really kind of refined everything down to, um, I don't know, like almost like the peak performance of pads i think we're almost in this golden era of goalie gear where everything is just like everything is good man. like no matter where you go it, it's it's all great yeah absolutely anything you get like you can just tell that it's like super protective the technology is to the best it can be right now and like that everything is just super smooth and i like the way the, the that goaltending like technology is going because like the pad graphics are even getting a lot better as well and just the pads are getting lighter which is also makes every makes everyone quicker as well and just like it's mm -hmm. just it's growing and growing and it's just it's awesome to see especially from where it started like how old how like the old school pads used to be and to the new pads now like it's it's nine day difference yeah right and you know you can really pick a, a pad or a, a set of gear that really fits your style specifically you know it's not just all the same exact thing across the board you know there's there's a really good diverse um you know pieces of gear out there now yeah absolutely so like what what do you notice about like the weight difference between like the your vintage set and then the the modern set that you have now the trues oh man i mean like the weight is definitely to be expected um with with vintage stuff i mean honestly getting these skates i I don't know why I didn't really think they were going to be super heavy, but I, I pulled them out of the box and I was like, holy cow, man, these things are absolute cinder blocks. Um, I mean, the bricks but, on your feet. Oh, dude. It, I'm, I'm actually really interested to see how those feel like actually skating on them. But yeah, like, like you said, like pads nowadays just keep getting lighter and lighter. And it's almost like, like how, like, right. When you think you've got the, the lightest pad ever, you know, a company comes out and says, we've got a, a pad that's even lighter than that. So, um, like I said, I think moving forward, you'll, you'll probably see, you know, some materials kind of change up a bit and pad will probably start getting lighter and, um, you know, maybe a, a different trend in some sort of strapping or something like that. But, uh, man, like I'm along for the ride. I'm, I'm dialed in. I'm, I'm hooked on goalie gear, just like most other goals. Yeah. Same here. And just going into uh, LaFave a little bit, since you're wearing LaFave's like they, they, they're, they're still the lightest pads on the market, right? 
I don't, I don't know if they're the the lightest. I, I know, I think Warrior might have had a lightest pad there for a while. But, um, you know, my 20.1s are definitely the lightest pad that I've, I've had so far. Um, you know, I'm hoping to maybe get in a set of 12.2 at some point. Uh, you know, they've been teasing a lot with uh, 20.2. So, I don't know. It's, you know, I, being in Lefebvre gear as long as I have, it's, it's really cool to see, you know, them develop and progress the way they have and you know this whole expansion with true and um so you know it's it's uh it's exciting to see uh where uh where they go from here yeah absolutely so you're uh you're in love with your lafays and you just love them a lot yeah yeah i, I really do like uh, i i got a, a one year review coming up and you know i've done so many videos on my my 20.1s so i was just going to do a quick quick little like three minute uh kind of update one year review thing but the just the quality man like it's it's top notch like i've never had pads that like have held up as well as these pads have so you know anything out of the lafay factory man like i i've seen some really quality stuff come out of there yeah that that's unreal because i'm i'm hoping to get into some lafays or trues sometime soon and i've heard nothing but good things about them and i like i can't wait to try them out because just seeing how light or seeing how light they are and just how like smooth, especially the rotation system. Like it, mm. it just, it's getting me excited to try them out. Oh yeah. Yeah. You got to try them for sure. Yeah. So how is the rotation system on it or have you noticed it a lot? So it's at first I was into more of like an open leg channel and this kind of seemed like a bit more of a tight system. And, you know, I wasn't really sure at first, but um, it, it feels great the the rotation at first was kind of strange it, i felt like it would kind of roll onto its face a little bit and i think a lot of people have had that issue too but um you know playing around with the strapping and um i think if you drop with kind of a more narrow butterfly it, it tends to kind of have some issues but um i actually recently changed the strapping up a lot and um i'll talk about that in my in my review actually but uh i had uh my buddy steve i i, I forget how to pronounce his last name it starts with a p but you know i don't want to butcher his last name but he actually recommended it to me um you know i i was kind of blown away by it you know i changed everything up and it felt almost like a different pad so um yeah the rotation system like like i said it's kind of like a a, a new uh uh i don't want to say a trend but like you know kind of this new direction that lefave has gone with their strapping and it's it's totally different from anything they've had before yeah that, that's unreal i can't can't wait to try i can't wait to see how the rotation system is and like the just this talk's getting me excited to try out some new, <laughs> new lefaves and new truths yeah dude for sure i i love my stuff yeah absolutely so i want to go into a transition to hockey and the nhl a little bit here since preseason is in full swing for the NHL hockey's mm -hmm. coming up regular season's coming up in less than two weeks I would say it's so like there's been so many different like guys going to new teams so many trades uh signings so like what has what have been some of your favorite signings especially on the goalie side and just being able to see all these new guys and in, in different jerseys and like new pads are coming out yeah honestly like seeing these Seattle Kraken pads and you know Drieger and, and Grubauer and um I, I that's that's really had my interest you know going into the regular season here you know it's 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 really cool seeing a new expansion team and I think they did a great job with all the colors and obviously like Drieger's bond pads look sick and um you know even Grubauer's uh 12.2s look awesome too so uh yeah that's that's been kind of the coolest thing for me to to check out yeah absolutely and every everything works with seattle's colors like their their jerseys pop out so much and like the pictures that you've seen on nhl's instagram facebook like like it just pops out and like the colors work so well and then you got the you got drieger's pads to cord grubauer like all their all those pads are just just simple or they're simple but like they're very effective and you know, obviously drieger's is like with the tentacles and everything like that, it's, he has he has an unreal setup, and it's just a it's just a lot of a lot of fun just seeing like a new team, and just like the direction that these goalies are going. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to see the NHL did a a, a pretty good job with um you know 
just their style. Um, it, I'm excited because the opening night here for the Preds is against Seattle. So it'll, it'll be cool, like getting back in the regular season and, you know, seeing this new expansion team all in one. Yeah. So what, what do you think is going to, it's going to happen to Seattle this year? Like, do you think they're going to, they're going to be another Vegas or do you think they're going to be like a, a mid, a mid team or like just not do so well? Uh, like, I think the same thing with Vegas, it was like, you know, nobody really knew. And then, you know, they just kind of took off and they, they ended up in the final that first year. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if, I don't know if we'll see Seattle in a final their first year, like we did Vegas, but I, I, who's to say, man, like, you know, they could absolutely come in and just tear it up. And it's, you know, again, kind of, kind of that uh, team of misfits that Vegas was when they first started. So I don't know. It's, it's exciting. You know, it, it definitely shakes things up in the NHL. Yeah. That's the good thing about the NHL. You never know what to expect besides like Tampa winning the last two Stanley Cups. But, but besides that, like you never know what to expect. The Canadians made the cup final this year. Like you never would have expected that. And just, there's so many different like underdogs that in the, in the league right now. And it's just going to be an exciting year to just, just to see how well these teams do and like what they're, what their style and like how they're going to play. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be a fun season. Yeah. Especially coming off of COVID season last year. I, I think I'm sure a lot of guys are excited to get back into, you know, the swing of things being a little more normal and uh, you know, getting back into going to games again, you know, for me, I'm, I'm excited about going back and watching games again. Yeah, absolutely. Seeing, seeing teams live being, being the Nashville and the Bridgestone arena again, like that, I'm sure you're very excited for that and just to see see the team again, see the boys play and just maybe maybe get into an NHL game one day. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, but uh so would you say that Seattle's probably like the most the team that you're most excited to watch this year? Well, yeah, I think they kind of have um you know, being a new team, they have a lot of uh, attention drawn to them. So it it's they got a big spotlight, so it'd be interesting to see what they do with it. You know, obviously, uh, interested to see how the Preds, you know, do this year. And then you got to watch Tampa. Like you, they they won it twice in a row, and you know, I think they're going to be hungry for a third. But uh, yeah, got to keep an eye on them. Yeah, absolutely. How crazy would it be if Tampa gets three in a row? Uh, it'd be unreal. Uh, but the the thing is, I I don't think it would surprise a lot of people either. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I know um, the Preds have a stadium series game here in Nashville, and I'm, I want to say it's against Tampa. I'm like 87.7% sure it's Tampa. 87.7. That, that'll be a fun game to watch <laughs> if it is against Tampa, especially like being outdoors and everything. Like that has to be one game to watch because you got, you got UC Soros going against, against Andre Vesileski. Like, Two of two top tier goaltenders like going at it and like it's it'll be a good good matchup for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be fun to watch. Yeah, so I got a few more questions. So like, what like going into this this season for Ebug for you? Like, what are you what are you most excited for? And just like to be with the guys or like what or just be at the games again. I mean, just going to games again uh, is kind of a big part. You know, obviously the opportunity to maybe play a game is pretty awesome, but um, I don't know. It's 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 a tough situation because you you don't want to see a goalie get hurt, let alone two yeah. goalies get hurt. Um, yeah, it, it, it'll be great to get back to going to games again, and you know, we'll see if I get invited out to any practices this year. Um, but uh, yeah, either way, man, I'm pumped. Yeah, that that's awesome. And then uh, my final question for you is, what's uh, not not hockey related, but like, what's your favorite pump up song? Pump up song. You know what? Like, I've been getting into a lot of lo-fi hip hop beats. Um, mostly just like looking for songs for like YouTube videos and stuff. But you know, every once in a while, I'll catch a, a couple songs in a row that get me pretty hyped up. Uh, yeah, not that's... the most hype thing, because considering it's mostly the most chill music ever, but. Uh, yeah, I, I get into it. Hey, anything to get you going, like that's that's pump up music. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter what kind, as long as it gets you pumped up. Like that's all that matters. Right. Yeah, but uh, Bonesy, thank you again so much for coming on the show for a second time, and I'm sure we're gonna have you on the show once again sometime soon in the, in the future. Uh, I appreciate your time, like always, and I I look forward to maybe seeing you seeing you in a in an Nashville jersey soon and 
you got to come down to Illinois. You got to come up to Illinois, and I'll come down to Nashville one of these days as well. Yeah, man. A lot of uh, a lot of fun, exciting things coming up.